Hey everybody and welcome to the Dante Bazier show. Today, -wee, we got a special, special guest, Mr. Louis the Porcupine Mutaya. He is one of the up and coming MMA fighters in South Africa. If you don't know, MMA stands for Mixed Martial Arts. He is also a Taekwondo black belt and a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. We chat all about his journey with his um, MMA fights, his um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and his Taekwondo. Please welcome Louis the Porcupine Mutaya. And guys, Porcupine isn't his middle name, it's his fight name. So you mean this stuff from here onwards is going to be uploaded? And people are going to see this? Yeah, it's going on the internet. On, yeah. a, on a site called YouTube. And also be on Spotify. And Anchor. And Google Podcasts. All the links to that will be in the description. I think I'm freaking out. I'm panicking! Nah, all good. Let's go. What's up? <laughs> good. How's it, don't you? Good on you. The Joe Rogan of Nuduk. That's what my dad called me. <laughs> it's cool, I like it. I don't want to be known as the Joe Rogan, but I want to be known as the Dante Bezier Show, because that's what I am. Mm, the Joe Rogan of Nuduk. Well, you, you like that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, just kidding. You want your own brand, so yeah. Exactly. The Dante Bezier. Of what? It's just called the Dante Bezier Show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's go. And you know, and you know the first. Theater. The first one. The first MMA fighter on. Really? Yes. So how much am I getting paid? Nothing. You're doing oh, it. Dang it. You're doing it out of love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of characters there. We have SpongeBob. We have Dark Vader. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's the first? Uh... What's the first question? Yep. So I know your background is in Taekwondo, if I'm correct. No. Then what is your background in? White crane kung fu. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's time to do. It's it's your dad. He came up with it. He was the one who said, "If anyone asks, you did white crane kung fu," and I did. So I'm gonna call Taekwondo white crane kung fu. Well, I got questions about Taekwondo. Yep. White crane kung fu. How did you get into Taekwondo? Or this white crane kung fu? <laughs> How are you talking about? So, I was in high school, uh, lower six, and I had a friend, his name was Leslie. Was, no, is, he's still alive, he's not dead yet. He's, uh, <laughs> his name is Leslie, Leslie. So, he did Shotokan and uh, part of Kyokushin. We went to school together, and he's, I, I, I would always nag him, like, show me a move, show me a move. And uh, he said, Okay, yeah, I'm gonna show you, but we're gonna finish high school first, then you join a gym, a normal dojo. So I said, okay. One day I was in the library where I stayed. I heard screams and shouts, so I went uh, next door to check, and people were wearing weird clothes and doing kicks, and I was like, this is my thing. So it, I just abandoned studying that day and asked them if I could join, and then they told me to join. I they told me the name of their style, Taekwondo, and from there, and that was 2014, 2014 around October. Huh? That's when I started Taekwondo, and I've been going since then. But I've always loved martial arts. Always loved martial arts. What, so you grew up watching martial arts movies? Yep. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Many people, it's either they were bullied into martial arts or they watched a lot of martial arts movies yeah. and started or Joe, training. Or Joe Rogan and Matt Thornton both got into martial arts because they got bullied at school. Really? Yep. <laughs> you, know, you, can, you can see Matt, who would bully such a big dude? <laughs> I, know, I know, I wouldn't. I would never. <laughs> But Joe, Joe, Joe is a bit tiny. <laughs> you hear that, Joe? He's tiny. No, I did not say that. I know that guy can mess me up. He's got now when really you, good tiny. Now when you get into the UFC, he's going to diss you while he commentates. Uh, isn't that illegal? I think it's illegal. I think you'll get sued. Yeah. You might get fired. Yeah, exactly. You'll lose, so, you'll lose his job. You got nothing on me, Joe. 
<laughs> Please don't show him this. Oh, oh, do, oh, do. Then I started fighting with him, we get a uh, trash talking letter, then I become famous. And then you're going to his podcast. Exactly. We'll be trash talking all through the show. <laughs> hey, no publicity is bad publicity. Oh, is it all publicity is good publicity? Which one is it? All publicity is good publicity. Okay. That's, that's the same. Ah, I'm twisting it out a bit. I'm yes. porcupine. Twist stuff. Yeah. <laughs> What was the journey like getting your black belt in Taekwondo? It was insanely hard. I, I remember, I got it in, let's see, I started in 2014, 15, 16, 17, let's say three years. That's, pretty, start. that's pretty quick. Yeah, but that's two sessions a day and sometimes I wouldn't take a day off uh, during the week, I'll just keep going. Training for months. Some days I do one session a day, and that would be my rest day. Okay. So it, it was really hard, and I was stupid. I would maybe get injured and just train through it. Just train through it. But it was worth it because it was fun. I loved it. I still do. Still enjoy it. And now the skills I got in Taekwondo I'm using in MMA, which, no, not Taekwondo, White Crane Kung Fu. I'm still using those kicks. You see, in my in my previous fight, I did a crane kick. Whoosh! I hit him with the crane kick. That's how I knocked him out. You all thought it was a punch, but it was actually a crane kick. I think it was a punch. Mm -hmm. No. You just go and look there. again. No. Nope. Go and look again. Was there? I watched your fight twice, and I I noticed you did a punch. Then. Aha! That's the problem. I've watched it seven, six times. That's when I saw the crane kick. You gotta watch it seven times, then you see it. Okay. <laughs> Go. Next one. But yeah, the journey was really hard, but fun. Because I had people along the way who... You make family in martial arts, like... Thanks to martial arts. You have friends. Yeah. That's how we met, because you came to my dad's gym and now we're... Sorry. Nice to meet you, don't you? I don't think I've ever said that. I don't think I've ever said nice to meet you, don't you? I've um, never said that to you either. Cool. I'm going to say it again. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, it's the same with skateboarding. Most of my friends are through skating. And you make the friends through the sport, but then you find out that you have other stuff in common. Like I have friends who, who help me with videos and I have other stuff, like that kind of thing. You, 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 you meet them through the sport, but then you end up doing other stuff with them. Like, Hanging out, maybe going to the movies, filming videos, all this kind of stuff. Exactly. You see, that's uh, that, that's that, that, that's how it is. It shouldn't be just about that thing. It's it's life. Yeah. That's how you you you, 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 you yeah. That's how you grow. Yeah. And I think it's really cool. And speaking of skateboarding, you do a lot of stuff, don't you? You do oh well, that I know. You do skateboarding. You said you do video editing because you've edited a lot of videos for me. And you also do podcasting. You do a lot of stuff. And I have my brand, PG Skateboarding. PG Skateboarding. Do you have t-shirts? Boards and grip tape. Yeah, you should sure? have t-shirts. I'm, I'm going to get shirts. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely want one. As a present. Not I am giving it to you. No, you, you, no, you, you have to. <laughs> you don't even skate. Yeah, I'll just look cool in it. Skater. You know, when, when, when people see me wearing that in my cape, wearing it backwards, yeah, I look rad. No one wears their cape, cap backwards nowadays. Well, no one I hang out with does. Thank God I'm old school. You, you, don't, you, don't, you didn't see me. I'm old school. I love the old school stuff. Backwards, worse. Sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Sideways just looks stupid. Wearing it front and backwards looks cool, but sideways just looks weird. But nothing wrong with weird. But why? Bingo. I agree with you. Thank you. Weird is the new cool. It's always been the cool. Weird. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I should know because I was that. I was always that weird kid growing up. But... So was I. But that's uh, the thing I've noticed. It's uh -huh. mostly we bring it upon ourselves. It's all in our heads. Because at some point you're going to have to make a choice that I'm not weird. The world just... I'm just a little bit different. And when you start perceiving yourself as not being weird, you see, you realize how cool you actually are. Yeah, and then you end up finding friends who like you just for the way you are instead of this 
fake version of yourself. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of people are going to like you the way you are, as long as you like yourself. Exactly. Mm. Well, that's why my all-time favorite quote is, why fit in when you're born to stand out? Exactly. Exactly. I, and that's, that's, that's why I find a lot of us go wrong nowadays. We try to fit in and out. Yeah, then we end up acting like we know something if we don't and we... Yep, we go out of our way to impress friends and to look cool. Ah, oh, thank God I'm me. I don't have to look cool. I don't have to try to be cool. I know I'm cool. If someone thinks you're cool, they will like you for who you actually are instead of this fake version. If they like don't, I'll beat them up. That's a bad idea. No, it's not. It's the best idea. If someone doesn't like you, beat him up. Then you end up gonna, gonna have no friends. <laughs> well, if people think you're weird anyway, you're gonna have no friends, so... There's no loss here. Well, some people think you're weird and some people think you're cool. It just depends on the person. But I have seen people who at first, I thought they were weird. But then I came to, to like them. God, he is weird, but he's cool. So maybe... That happens a lot. Maybe being weird is just being misunderstood. That is true. Mm -hmm. Because I had a friend who was in my class. Well, for, first I met my friend Eric. He's, Eric. You probably never met him. Okay. He's in a bunch of my videos. Is he into skateboarding? Yes, and he also does YouTube. <coughs> but when I first met him, we didn't like each other. But then as we had kind of like forced to hang out because we're in the same class, we ended up coming friends. Wait, wait, was he the one he choked? Wait, was he? No. <laughs> that was a different guy. <coughs> oh, COVID. I'm gonna give it to you. COVID. Ah. Uh. <laughs> anyway, Eric? Well, what, what I was saying is, first we didn't like each other, but yeah. now we're good friends. That happens a lot. And why didn't you like each other? I can't even remember. Probably just good. <laughs> it's kind of like that thing, because since we're in the same class at school, we're kind of like forced to be with each other, and I think that's probably why. Ah, so the people that might be forced to be with each other. Now you choose to be friends. Yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. Okay, right. next one you better be about anime. No? Nope. We're saving that to the end. First we're going to... I just spoiled it. There's no anime here. No, we're not going to talk about anime. What's anime? What's anime? What's that? <laughs> what was it like competing at Taekwondo competitions? If you did any. I did a lot. I did a lot. Well, so every weekend you were doing a different tournament? Not every weekend. You know, it's Africa, especially in Zim. You'd have maybe three tournaments a year? Yeah, three. And that, that's a lot. So I ended up having to sacrifice going to other countries. Like I've competed in Joburg, I've competed in Mozambique twice, I've competed in Malawi. So yeah, but it was not every weekend. But it was very stressful. I can imagine. Yeah. Uh I I I, I, I am a very should I say anxious person? Maybe. And just nervous? Don't know. Yeah, but nervous, yeah. I do experience a lot of uh, nerves okay. before the fight. Because, again, before Taekwondo, I was into soccer. Well, soccer is a team sport, so you're good, you can die on your team. I also did soccer. Really? What position do you play? I can't remember. I just remember no, running the ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were playing the ball. That's good. I played soccer. What position are you playing? I was playing ball. <laughs> Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I was uh, I was a defender. That's one of the boring positions. Mm, no, 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 no. You get to tackle people. You get to hurt people. I got penalized a lot, but it was worth it. It was worth it. Okay. I I, I played uh, center back, and I was a really good defender. It's just one of those things which uh, show you. I've always been into defense. You see, even when I fight, I'm a uh, kind of a defensive person. Which I did not say that I like to play my offense. Yeah, so I, I'm not giving away anything. You better not send this to my opponents. Damn, it, those creeps are gonna be creeping up on now. Uh... They might Google your name and find me. <laughs> Gotta no. be careful what you say. <sighs> That's the thing. They, I, I, I might give something, but they won't know what to expect. And that's the nice thing about SPG. Yeah. Yeah. 
Anyway, going back to how it was to compete in Taekwondo, it, it was very stressful, but looking back, it was very helpful because despite the stress, I did it anyway. I got in there, I kicked people, got kicked, but uh, yeah, and it taught me that no matter how I feel, I must always be able to do what has to be done. And I found myself lately being more relaxed in MMA than I ever been in Taekwondo. And you know, when you're relaxed, you can perform better. Okay. And perform better. So yeah, it was very stressful, but super helpful because now I can deal with stress in, in, in the fighting environment. Much better in life. Have the way you've learned to deal with stress when you're competing, have you taken that into real life, like let's say, like having problems at home or at work, all that, like normal life stuff? Yeah, yeah. That's why I love martial arts. Each time I get challenged in, the, in training and in competitions, it, it, it doesn't end there. I get challenged. I, someone's throwing punches in my face, I have to dodge, I have to move fast, I have to stay calm. It helps me as well outside uh, training in real life. Martial arts it does help me a lot. I'll give you an example. I had a scooter, I'm sure you know. Yeah. And my brother, he he crushed it. Oh man. I, I, is, I, I, is he okay? Yeah, he, he's, he's good. That was last year. So okay. he was okay. He was all good. I was not happy. I was really, really angry, Dante, but I didn't do anything stupid. I just kept quiet. I just kept staring at myself inside saying, Oh, you're angry. That's what anger feels like. Oh, and it feels like that feeling you get before you get into a fight. You know, your heart rate goes up, you, you, yeah. your breathing changes, and you just feel really, really weird. You know, I was focusing on the sensations of, uh, of being angry, and it felt exactly like how I feel, that those nerves I feel before a fight. So yeah, I was able to control it, and again, do what must be done, which in that situation was just be calm and not ruin our family bond because of stupid thing, it was an accident. So yeah, it does help a lot. You replaced the scooter? No, I sold it for parts because it was damaged. No, not that, but it wasn't functioning properly. Like I would drive it and then it would just... It wouldn't be safe? Yeah. Uh, I would drive and then it would just cut the engine off by itself. You know when you're on the road and then the scooter just decides, okay, I'm tired, I need a rest. And then you have to stop. Sometimes it will be at night and I have to, it was so horrible so I decided to sell it and the guy said it cannot be fixed which I'm pretty sure he lied but I wanted to get rid of it so I got rid of it. Okay. Hmm. When are you getting your scooter, don't you? Mm, probably, I don't know. You're 18, right? Yes, I can get a scooter and a bike and a car but I'm busy focusing on finishing High school because I'm doing this online schooling program. So once I'm done that, then I'm going to focus on getting my driver's license. Because mm -hmm. once I get my license, my dad will drive, buy me a car. That's the same thing he did for my brother. And you, which one do you want? A car or a bike? Car is safer and also I can, I can fetch my friends and go to skating. Makes sense. Makes sense. So the bike is cooler. Wearing shirts, walking up on a bike, at a skate park, and then parking your vehicle. Can you see that is skateboard? Uh, bike? That looks cool. I like watching freestyle motocross. Wait, which one is that? There's a, there's a lot of motor motorbike sports. I get confused. Which one is that? That's uh, doing tricks like backflips and other stuff. With motorbikes? Yes, well, they like they like dirt bikes. Ah, oh, I, gosh, I should really go do that. Because it did do oh, the dirt biking, dirt biking thingy. It's really cool. I think go mountain biking. Uh, normally go in Tokai with this uh, friend of mine. Okay. It's super fun. It's risky. Again, it's like fighting. It's super risky. Yeah. But I love it. Have you ever been mountain biking? No. Why not? Then my friend gives me a lift. I did. Oh, you you haven't ridden a skateboard. <laughs> yes, I have. You probably fell on your bum. No, I did not. That's oh, I, did. <laughs> I did, I did, I fell a lot, thankfully. But you know who taught me how to skate? I, I can get on the bike and on, on the skateboard and move it. Well, Zoe taught me. Ah. So it's definitely. Well, your dad skates. Yeah, 
she, she, she taught me how to and I would say I'm good. No, I'm far from good. I cannot do anything but get on it and not fall. Maybe. It's a start. Make it move. Maybe. Make it move. And that's a maybe. A big maybe. Okay. Yeah. That's a start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was it like growing up in Zimbabwe? Okay, what was it like? Is in am I comparing it to here or just like how was the experience living there? Like did you like it? Did you dislike it? Was it fun? Do you have like good memories or bad memories? Like just that kind of stuff. Hmm. Yeah, because I, I was just maybe asking myself. I don't want to compare it to here because we all know it's different. Yeah, and a lot different. But it's life. It has its ups and downs, and uh, wherever you are. You know the situation you're saying, you know how it is, but it has it had its ups. And the ups, being close to family, was cool. We moved around a lot when my mom was still alive. We moved around a lot and making new friends. It was cool. And what I love the most about Sim is it's safe. Or at least it used to be. You look at the crime rates here and there. Did what I said was I was not gonna do. I'm comparing, but anyway, just that one thing. No need to compare. All right, it, it's safe. Like you don't have to worry about. <coughs> oh, dude, he's not gonna get COVID. Uh, yeah, you don't have to worry. You can walk any time of 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 of, of the day, night, and uh, and know you're safe. No okay. one is gonna attack you or anything. That's good. That was the plus side. And the other side. Oh, I'm oh back on. thank you. Uh, I was about to ask, did I bore you? Did I? No. I was just turning the light on to make the video. Okay. So thank you. Can actually see yes. our, our good-looking faces. The only person who's good-looking here is SpongeBob. If they seen him, if they seen SpongeBob. <laughs> That dude is cool. Did you watch the new movie? I think. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Ah, it's super cool. Loved it. Anyway, the thing I didn't like about when I was in Zim was I had a lot of problems, like a lot of uh, fears, a lot of phobias, a lot of low self-esteem, which made me not enjoy a lot of things. I had social anxiety. I couldn't go to social events. Even though now I do still feel like I have a little bit, but I don't go because I don't want to most of the time. But, you know, when you don't hang around with people, you just... That's what maybe made me train a lot. Like, if I got bored at home, because I cannot socialize with people... You think you train a lot because it's something you can do alone? Yes. I actually enjoy it a lot when I do it alone at home. I also, I like skiing alone. Yeah, it gets in the zone. But also sometimes it's cool to do it with someone. That's that's the best part. Like, check Jits for instance. You need a partner. You need to learn new things. And you cannot learn everything. No, you cannot learn by yourself. You need someone to teach you. In skateboarding, you need someone to show you the motions, how to do it. Yeah. And then the fun part is going and practicing by yourself. True. Mm. But anyway, I didn't like that about myself and by the time I left Zim I was starting to to work on myself. I was 19 when I left Zim and I could feel myself starting to read books, starting to listen to audiobooks on how to love myself, how to better my self-esteem, how to yeah, how to stand up for myself. And the main thing that changed my life was from reading those books and those uh, podcasts and stuff. I hope this one changes someone's life. Anyway they they taught me that you need to stand up for yourself and for your goals which made me say uh, I want to do martial arts and I don't want to go to university and I, I don't want to go to the army air force no which that's what I was supposed to do I was supposed to go to join the air force and then from there oh there was that option or go to university but what I was going to study sorry what were you going to study? Business studies. Okay. Uh, or business management or economics between those two. I was thinking between those two because I did the two subjects in A level, which I would have picked up and do a degree in uh, university. But I was, that's the thing. I, I did that 
but I was more into, or oh, even now you see, I'm more into studying the science and arts and philosophy. Big business is good, but it doesn't, doesn't interest me. I'm interested in stuff like quantum science, the study of tiny things. Not me, because I'm huge, I'm, I'm a giant, but I'm interested in studying those for, for my own understanding. Okay. Mm. So yeah, that, that whole university thing was just peer pressure and family and stuff. They wanted me to do that, but I wanted to do this to beat people up. It does not sound good, I know, but I love it. It doesn't. But... It's, it's okay, it's the journey, not the beating people up part, but it's the journey that I love. That's a better answer. Exactly. Do you miss Zimbabwe? A lot. You yeah. probably miss your friends. Sorry? You probably miss your friends and family. Not really. Yes, I'm not supposed to say no. Yes. But I just miss the land more. The... Oh, there's lots of like open space and like nature. Yep. But there's that feeling of being home, being in, in the borders of your own... Can I say? Yeah, own country. You're feeling comfortable. Exactly. It's so so cool being in, being here in South Africa, but it's gonna take My a My brother. Ugh, oh, creep. <laughs> he wants his episode. Are you gonna... He said yeah. it's weird. It is weird. It's, it's weird. weird. it's weird doing family. Huh? Why? I don't know, it's just like... It's not for you, it's for them. You have a point there, but it is a little weird. <laughs> just draft a couple questions, send them down here, and the nice thing is if they talk a lot, which I know I'm doing, or if they say something you don't agree with, you can just... Edit it out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. and anyway, uh, are we moving to the next question, or because... You were I'm, saying about, um, it asked if you were missing Zimbabwe, and you were talking about the land. Yes. Uh, the, 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 there is that, don't you? Which is really hard to explain, that vacuum of space that you call home and then the land that's what i miss and the energy of just being in your home you know being in your country i know yeah there's a lot of sim people here that's how i know it's not the people because there's a lot of zimbabweans here which uh, is a crazy lot well but sorry well at least you didn't come down to cape town by yourself like you're with your brother yeah, and your that, sister and... Th th that's cool the, Maybe that's the only thing that keeps me sane, having them around. But then I, I still get that feeling, you know, that oh, it's gonna take a lot for you to be home. But then that's when I realized it's, it's that space of Zimbabwe, that vacuum, that openness, that energy, that air, everything about it. That's what I miss. Because you, 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 let me tell you something weird. At certain times when things go in a way which I won't specify, I sometimes feel like I cannot breathe. Why? Because the air feels different. Yes, it's all in my head. Yeah. But that happens. I feel like, whoa, I'm really struggling to breathe. I need some Zimbabwean air. <laughs> then I go and find someone from Zim and then I sniff it. <laughs> oh, you're from Zim. Okay, thank you. That's good, and I get a different day. I'm, I'm kidding, but it, there is that feeling that... Well, Cape Town has cleaner air than other places in the world. I agree. Because I know the wind here sucks, like it ruins your day, because you, <laughs> going to malls is boring, unless you have money. Yeah. And, and you want to be outside, because being outside is better than being inside. <laughs> and when it's windy, you basically can't do anything besides just be in your house and maybe watch a movie. Yeah, but the, but the thing is, with, the, with having it making it having it in Cape Town be super windy actually cleans our air and makes like cleans the pollution and makes the air fresh. Yeah, because I've heard <coughs> from someone who uh, who stayed in England for a while that since it's not windy there at all, like it's very the air is very polluted. Like when he sneezed, that some black stuff would come out. Whoa, <laughs> the bad side. <laughs> really? Yeah, uh, he didn't specify what it was, but I just heard, he just said somebody. Oh, what's that? <laughs> no. So the wind's annoying, but it keeps the air fresh. Yeah. Yeah, and you, we've got the oceans, so when it's burning hot, you can go to the beach, there are mountains. I say this place is really cool. You know what I think would work? It would be visiting home a 
break, maybe for a couple months. Here, being here for a couple months, that, I think that's what would be nice because it's better here. Let's be honest, it's like one, it's like living in the UK or in America when you live here in Cape Town. Well, it's known as one of the most beautiful cities in the world. See, especially this side. Yeah, the South Peninsula. Ah, so is, is it called the South, South Peninsula? Yeah, that's uh, around here, like Fisher, Kamnoda, Komiki, Cape Point. Around this whole area is called the South Peninsula. And past that? I don't really. They call it the southern suburbs. And then town, I forgot what it's called. They call it the CBD, which stands for Business, no, Central Business District. Mm -hmm. Did that geography, don't you? Yeah, I did geography. Good man. I failed, but I did it. At least you tried. No, I did, I did, not, I did not fail. For me, I failed because I got an average grade. Which you I was. Passed. You know, a teacher of mine, uh, no, it was the headmaster when I was in, in, in high school, in level. He said, average is as close to the top as it is close to the bottom. And that stuck with me. Okay. So each time I, did, I do something, I want to make sure I either don't do it at all, or I do and I get more than average. Okay. That, that, that's, that's my goal. I train martial arts. I want to be the world champion. I, I don't want to be one of those people who are, yeah, they are world champions, but they are very boring. And I will not say... So what you're trying to say is you want to be the world champion, but you want to be a fighter that has a cool personality that people can like relate to and yeah. like. Which I, I, I know I'm, uh, I'll say I got a lot of work to do, but... Yeah, just enjoy the journey. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's funny because I often sit down and study. How can I be better? How can I... Because let's be honest, I, I was not born with it. I was not born with the uh, Conor McGregor charm, how to make everyone watch my fights, how to make people hate me so they can watch me, which sounds really weird, but... I have to study, I have to learn how to do interviews, I have to learn how to just be a person who is worth watching. Which, yeah, like I said, I know I've got a lot of work to do. Do you study that, don't you? Study what? How to be a cool podcast dude, because no. you're doing a really good job. Well, wait, 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 what do you mean no? Is, is it genetic? Are you just sitting there being cool because you were born like that? I'm just Dang it, the word is so unfair. I'm just being myself. Really? Yeah. It's working. Good. Well, I do listen to a lot of podcasts during the week. Like, I listen to Joe Rogan, I listen to the Nine Club, which is a skateboarding podcast, and a bunch of other ones. And I always, when I'm listening, I always see what the get, what the host is doing. Like, I try and not copy them, but just get, like, ideas and see no, of course. how they do it. Of course. Because I don't think it's good to copy, like, like I mustn't, no, be, I mustn't be the next Joe Rogan, I must be my own type of host. Yes. It's like you, you must be the next Conor McGregor or, who, or whoever, you must be your own type of fighter, your own The person. Porcupine. Yeah. Oh, no, not there, but just Porcupine. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you said something about uh, Joe in watching his podcasts. He talks about a lot of stuff, and a lot of really, really weird stuff. He talks about... Aliens, it talks about ghosts, ghosts, animals, uh, animals and, and, and other dimensions and stuff. What's your opinion on that? And now, now I'm, I'm questioning you. Huh? You're in my podcast now. The Lewis Mattia Show. The Lewis Porcupine Mattia Show. Sorry, Porcupine. But can I eat the porcupine, don't you? The million dollar porcupine. So, what is your question to me? What was my question to you? What was my question to you? I talk it. Sometimes I forget what I was about to say, but I, did that I do too. remember. I do remember where I was. I was uh, asking you, what's your opinion on his shows and the topics that he covers sometimes? What? Like conspiracy theories and... Yeah, mainly conspiracy theories. What in to do with uh, Joe. What's your opinion on that? Well, you, want, want, you want my opinion on his show? Yeah. Okay. And a lot of stuff that he talks about. Well, he's one of the main reasons why I decided to start my own podcast. Because my dad was listening to him first, and my dad recommended it, and I just listened. So I was like, it's cool enough. I'm like, I like having conversations, so I might as well start my own one. And the cool thing about Joe Rogan's podcast is he gets a variety of guests. Like, like each 
week, you have no clue who the hell is going to be on there, and that's or cool. what they're going to be talking about. Exactly. Because you could think, even though you might know the guest, you, they might be talking about something completely different, and that's cool. With a lot of other podcasts, you kind of get it just for who the guest is going to be. Like, you kind of like, oh, okay, this podcast specializes in, in skateboarders. This one specializes with mostly comedians. But with Joe, you have no clue. Like, mm. one week you could have some scientists on. The next week, it's an up-and-coming MMA fighter. He had Philip and Tony Hawk on, the most famous skateboarder in the world. Really? Yeah. You know, I've read about him thanks to you, Tony Hawk. Yes. Really good. Anyway, of the guests he often gets, he, he often gets a lot of uh, really weird guests who talk about conspiracy theories. Yeah, that's his friend um, Alex Jones. No, no, not just what, a lot. He's had a lot of people talking about those kind of things. What, what's your opinion on that? That's cool. Really? Would you invite yeah. someone who talks about aliens? Sure. Mm. I mean, in my full podcast, I asked him about aliens. And? He doesn't really believe in them, but he, but he likes the idea of, of other planets. Like, he doesn't believe that... Uninhabited planets. planets. What? Uninhabited planets. Yeah. That's what he believes. I must really watch that. <coughs> I'll send you the link. That's the third cough now. I'll be fine. <laughs> Nah, I'm just kidding. It's uh, you probably have to get tested before your fight. Yeah, get the thing tested. up your nose. No, it's not that. It was the really weird one where you have to to spit in a little tube. You know how many hours I spent spitting? Ah, <laughs> oh, it was in the in the bathroom. Just kept no wait, gotta get it in, pick up a little, cause I was running out of of of, of saliva. <laughs> I had to pick it up and put it in the tube. Oh, that was the most dis. Disgusting thing I've, or oh, one of the most disgusting things I've ever done. That. That was really weird. And, uh, yeah. But then the other thing is, with, with, the, with the Dante, sorry. Did you hear that? I want to say Joe Rock, and now I'm saying Dante, I'm calling Joe Dante. I mean, I am better than him. Yes, you are, Mr. Buzz Buzz. Yes, you are. We should really change it to Mr. the Mr. Buzz Buzz show. Now. That's yeah. it. And yeah, that's, that's the look as What I've learned is it's good to, to have a brand, like I have my brand Peaches. It's also good to make you, you yourself, like the brand. Like kind of like, like people, like people like to know who's behind what they're buying and people like supporting a person. So like making you the brand is kind of a good thing. So that's why I kind of just named it after me. Also, also I'm going to interview whoever I feel like. It's not just going to stick to like skaters. I'll be like, one day I'll have you on, maybe next day I'll have Phil. Maybe I'll have uh, some yeah. other guy, I don't know, it doesn't matter. You get a lot of followers that way, when you yeah. diversify your, your guests. Yeah. Variety is important. Yeah. Okay, what's the next, uh, next why, question? Why did you choose to move to Cape Town, the home of Table Mountain? <laughs> Funny enough, someone said you've never been to Cape Town until you've been to Table Mountain. So, I'm still in Zim, I'm not in Cape Town yet, I'm still in Zim. Or maybe Joburg, I'm somewhere there. I'm, I'm on my way. Okay. Almost here. Did you get robbed the first time you went to Joburg? No, I did not. I punched someone who was about to rob me. I would say that was the first street fight I've had since I started training martial arts. The guy was trying to grab my bus ticket and then one, two, three, in his face. <laughs> okay, why did I decide to move to Cape Town? It's one of those things which just show you that life wants you to go a certain way, a certain direction. Okay. I, I could have gone to join, I, I don't know, any other gym, but I came here. And I would say it was fate. How did it happen? My brother, when he first came here, he stayed here and then was here for a couple of years. And then he, he said, you want to do martial arts big time? Okay, you, you have to come here, do it here. And I had been thinking about it for a while, but I was not ready to come here. So in 2018, I came and I was staying with him. We, a friend of his said, there's a gym along Sunnydale Road on your way to the mall, because we were staying in Masjid then. And we came here, we checked it out. But before that, I called, I, 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 was, I was looking on, on the internet for gyms, MMA gyms. I called 
I got numbers. I got uh, takedown. I got max MMA, and I got SPG. So I was like, which one should I call first? I called Coach, your dad. Okay. And he's, I told him I wanna be an MMA fighter. And he said, okay, come through, and we can we can chat. Uh, so I said, okay, come through, cool. And I think it was busy because he hung up. Come through where? Where should I go? So <laughs> I just said, okay, that's out. I called Max and uh, they didn't answer, Takedown didn't answer, so we were passing by here and then we came inside, checked it out, and I, I recognized his voice from the, from the phone, I said, oh, that's the guy, that's him, and then I joined the SPG, but coming to Cape Town, my brother stayed, moved here first, and then he was staying here and he asked me to come, let it, that's how I came to Cape Town. Nice. Thank you. What's your favorite? What's your favorite part about living here? SPG. Well, you're a non-stop trainer. Exactly. You told me you watch movies while you shadow box. Is that still the case? No, because at the moment I couldn't watch on TV. I can only watch either on my phone or my tablet. So it's small. You know when you're watching on a small thing, get out of here, get out, come here and stare at it. But so you can have shadow box. You need space shadow box. True. But I, I, I just. Go outside a lot or just stand and just start shadow boxing. Yeah, but I do it a lot. It's like one of my hobbies. I don't even think about it. In fact, I think about stopping it because it, it now has a mind of its own. <laughs> I can feel my body when I'm walking, just shadow boxing. This other day I was walking with a girl. I found myself keeping my hands up and I was like, don't do it, Lewis. Don't, don't, don't do it. My hands are coming up wanting to throw a punch. And yes, I was walking with a girl, Dante. Is there a question about that? Is there? Maybe. No spoilers. Okay. Fine. Let, let's 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 see. What's the next one? Oh, you want the next question? Yeah. So you're a non-stop shadow boxer. Yeah. <laughs> well, I told you the story before when I was, when John Cameron I was here, Conor McGregor's coach. He Did was, you punch him? No, I did a thumb war with him. A what? A thumb war. Oh, did you win? I think I won one and he won one. Or he won twice and I won only one. Why do you have a feeling you let him win just to boost his No, he probably let me win. Mm, I don't think so. I think you let him win. No. Just to make him feel good about himself. He really feels good about himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he should. He should feel proud. But then he said, cool dude. I heard he's a bit anxious. Anxious? Yeah, like he's, uh, he's more of an introverted, reserved. Kinda of shy person? Maybe. Yeah, I, I heard that. And him and Conor, he said it's a good balance. Because Conor's outgoing, he's loud, he's really yeah, but that's extroverted. How, that's how Conor acts in the public eye, but maybe at home he's a quiet person. I heard the same thing. I heard he's, he's, he's always uh, by himself. Oh, not always, but he's by himself, working stuff out in his head, planning. But then he realizes he has to be extroverted when he goes out. and be loud so he can yeah, sell himself as a fighter, as a brand. Yeah, sell the fight. Hmm. Which he does a good job. My dad said he was in Dublin with John. People would always come up to him and give him advice on how you should coach. Like in the street, they'd just be, they'd just be walking and then some guy would stop and be like, Hey, you should do this in your next fight. This is, this is. Like people <laughs> giving him advice. <laughs> well, what kind of people? It's just random. Yeah, people. random people just know him. Whoa. <laughs> And what, what's your opinion on that? It's funny. Yeah, it is funny. But then you gotta look at it both ways. In a way, I don't know what kind of cuts it takes for you to go to a world champion coach. Like a, a world class coach who's trained world champions and say, you need to do this. Shouldn't you stop him and ask him, what should I do? I mean, yeah. Come on. But that's good. That's good for him as well because he, he's getting ideas. True. Pretty sure he's, uh, he's, hated, he's, he's used one or two of those things, those advices he got from those random people. Probably not. But you never know. Yeah. In, 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 in Schrodinger's uh, experiment in quantum science, he did and he did not. Yeah. And from here, we don't know if he did or he did not. So we'll say he did both. Yeah. Well, the story I was trying to say that I've told you before is when I, 
we were walking back from Bowser's Beach in Salmon's Town, and he was walking faster ahead. Is that where the pancakes are? Yes. Oh. Walking ahead of us, and walking, he's walking ahead of me and my dad. And then, as we get to him, we just see him standing there doing some shadow boxing. Oh! He's like, it's never, <coughs> never a bad time to get some training in. <laughs> that, 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 that's how you have to do these things. You gotta be a little bit gone, a little bit addicted. Well, rest is also good for you. Yeah, it is. But that's the thing. You're not using any energy when you're shadow boxing. And that's what I do. I, I train a lot. But. I try, I try, not always, but I try, Some, sometimes, I try to be smart about it, I come here, I do jets, I do striking with Sam afterwards, or wherever I am, and then I do my conditioning, that's three sessions, right? Yes. How many hours? Let's say four hours, and then I shadow box, so I'm working different muscles, different parts of my, uh, not my brain, but body, body maybe. Yeah, because one I'm standing, one I'm on the ground, one I have weight, which is body weight, I'm working it. One I don't have any weight, I'm just going through the motions. Just yeah. kicking and punching without hitting any target, no resistance. So you can train all day, you just need to train different parts of your body. Yeah. And w when I get tired, and what I do? I train my mind, I watch fights, I, uh, I study philosophy, either a bit of science, just to keep myself busy. And then I watch movies, cool. which makes me go to bed late, which I'm not supposed to do. That's really bad. I'm the same. Really? Yeah. But what, what do you do? I watch movies. Man. Ah. Man. <laughs> There's lots of good movies out there. <laughs> and also bad ones. <laughs> where, where do you watch most of your movies? Netflix? Yeah. What kind of stuff do you watch? Because I, 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 I'm only limited to animations, as in animated movies, Spongebob, and anime. I, 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 I really watch human like live movies. action stuff. Yeah. Ugh, they, they bore me. And they don't have any Marvel, or most Marvel movies. Or they Netflix is the animated Marvel movies. Exactly. There's... And they are annoying. There's Hulk versus, there's Hulk versus Thor, and then there's Hulk versus Wolverine. Did I watch that? Hulk? Yeah, I did, I did. The animated did. films. I did. They're good. The previous one, or the last one I watched was... Batman, Lego. Good did movie. you watch it? Good movie. Really? Did, did you watch it? I love, love Lego movies. Batman vs Ninja Turtles is cool. Yeah, it is cool. I, I can't believe he did a number on all the four turtles. He's Batman. He's Batman. No, wait. I have the... I'm Batman as well. I have the... Talking goes with Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. No. <coughs> I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Yeah, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I just said. <laughs> I have the the comic of Batman vs Ninja Turtles, the second one, because the movie was based on the first comic and the second one. So you watch, you read comics, yeah. and then you watch movies of the same comics. Not does it does 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 it not feel like you've spoiled it for yourself? No, because sometimes the movie is different to the comic. Yeah, but still, you know how it's gonna end, doesn't or how it's gonna progress. Doesn't matter. Oh, that's like spoiling it. No, maybe it's because I'm not much of a comic person. Comics are cool. Ah, you gotta pick it up when you're young. I I find most of the stuff I enjoy now are the stuff that I have been programmed or I've programmed myself to enjoy as I'm younger. It's really hard for me to that pick is, up new. That's true. Habits. Because when you're younger, you're more likely to try different things. Exactly, exactly. So now it's... I, I expand more on the things I know and in a certain field, like most of the things I enjoy, or I can, I can pick up new habits. Like I, I, like I told you, I recently learned to mountain bike. It's cool because it pumps a lot of adrenaline. Yeah, it's good cardio. It's good cardio, it's really good cardio. So yeah, all the activities I enjoy, new habits, they go around that same direction where it has to be physical and it has to be intense. Okay. Alright, I can see the next question is coming up. Yep. How did you get into MMA and Jiu Jitsu? Oh. Well, yeah. <laughs> well from white crane kung fu, I was training in Taekwondo Museum, then I moved here, 
I joined the Jiu Jitsu gym, SPG, which coach, I, 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 wanted, I wanted to fight without any Jiu Jitsu. I would fight in MMA because I've I've always loved MMA when I was training Taekwondo. So when you were in Zim, you were still watching fights? MMA fights? Yes. Yes, I was when I started knowing about Conor McGregor. So yeah, I came here, I said, Coach, I want to fight MMA. Oh, by, the, by that time I was calling him Sir. Sir, I want to fight MMA. And he said, cool. You're a Taekwondo black belt, but you need jets, you need uh, boxing, you need wrestling he did a lot of things so he made me train jits first and a lot of other stuff for a year without competing in MMA just doing jits to well his gym is more specialized in jits is it? yes are you sure? yes are you sure? no people okay I'm not gonna talk about this because it's gonna give away a lot but then don't talk about it okay yeah but just no it's not a it's not a I'm not saying he's just exclusively jets, I'm just saying it's, he more specializes in that, but I'm not, I'm not saying he doesn't do like other stuff. Most people think that, they think it's just a jets gym. So let's, let's, let's say that, yeah, it's just a jets gym, we don't do any striking. Or well, what, what, what's striking? Uh, I think it's when you stand him. I could be wrong. Nah, we don't do that. We do jets. Yeah, that's some just American say. stuff. Yeah, we only do jets here. Go. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like competing at jiu-jitsu tournaments? Because you've done a few of them, correct? Yeah. Didn't you win your first one? Because I, I was there on that day. I did not. It was an average performance, which, in my opinion, I lost. But you won? No. I, 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 I won two matches. I lost two matches. The same guy. Like, I, I went with him the first time. I lost. But you get other opportunities. I choked out the next one, and the next one I won. So I faced against him in the finals, and I got a silver medal. So I lost. Anyway, competing in jits. Oh, because I've done striking tournaments, jits is easy because I know I'm not gonna get hit in the face. But just before that, I can feel the nerves kicking in, so I have to tell myself to remind myself to relax. And yeah, they are. I still have to be super cautious because the chances of getting injured are very high when you're moving fast and body weight's dropping on you. So I'm super alert, super sharp, but there's not that many nerves now. It's cool, it's relaxed. That's good. It's mm -hmm. good to be relaxed when you're in a competition. So it's good to be relaxed. Because if you're not relaxed, you get, you get stressed and then you don't perform as well as you can. You know what? The, the thing that happened uh, before to me was. Uh, I, I, I get, when I get nervous, I get a lot of adrenaline that sometimes when you ask me what happened in the fight, I'm like, you tell me what happened in that fight. Because I, op I, I used to operate on instinct. I used to react, uh, my attacks, my counters. So it's like our, uh, my, 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 my awareness was not there, but just I was just working on instinct, just reflexes, just what I've trained. And also, I was the kind of person who would train for every possible scenario, so my body would just know how to handle that. So as I started getting more and more relaxed, I would find myself in the middle of the fight, like, hang on, I'm in a fight. You know, adrenaline is starting to slow down a bit, and then you're starting to come back to your senses, your awareness is coming back, like, whoa, I'm in a fight. Then you have to start, but in jets, there is none of that. That's good. Mm. Good. And as I learn to relax, I find myself performing more, saving energy, being more efficient, which is good. Do you, do you ever get any, 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 do you ever get nervous uh, for any skateboarding or anything that you do? Not really. Really? Yeah. Or do you ever put yourself in any position where you feel hard for going up, you feel, oh. Sometimes. But it sometimes happens naturally. Like, I mean, sometimes it's like, Stuff will just happen, and then like you get nervous, but then like what? What was the last thing that happened? The last thing that happened. Yeah, the thing that got you really nervous. Really nervous. Yeah. My dad doesn't even know this, but he's gonna find out. <laughs> My brother thinks it's the funniest thing ever, but I don't. <laughs> the doctor I go to said I need to work on my cardio. Ah. And I was using, you know, the rowing machine at the back. Yeah, yeah. I was using it, and your hands get sweaty from holding the thing. Yeah. 
So my hand slipped. Well, we, my hand slipped. I lost my, my grip. And the, and the thing flung forward, like the, the other thing you used to pull back and forth. Yeah. And I thought I broke the machine. So I was freaking out because my dad got that machine machine for free and <laughs> repairing is very expensive. Yeah, it is, he told me. So I was so nervous. And then I talked to my brother quickly. And he thought it was the funniest thing ever because I, the machine wasn't working at all. And all that turned out was the battery fell out. But I was freaking out so much because I, <laughs> I didn't know how my dad was going to react. Because sometimes he could be chilled and sometimes he could be annoyed. You don't really know. Yeah, he can be very unpredictable. Yeah, but it's not always a bad thing. It, it's good. It's good. Yeah. It's good. You don't want to think you have someone figured out. No. Yeah. And people, they always like that. You don't want to predict what someone's going to do or how it's going to react because people change. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine. What, what did you do? What did you do after you broke the machine? I was walking around, like, breathing heavily. Like, <laughs> my heart was racing. <laughs> and then I told my brother, he was like, just take deep breaths. He went to the back room and he was like, dude, the battery just fell out. <laughs> <laughs> and then there is that moment. Oh, and yeah, you feel the relief. Mm. I, I, I've heard that relief so many times that now when I'm in a, in a tight spot, doesn't matter what, could be before the fight or anything, I put myself in that ah, moment, that relief moment, even when I'm still in trouble. It just that helps me relax, finding that comfy spot, that safe spot. It, it helps, me, helps me deal with the situation better. Just imagine that I'm, I've done I've, 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 I'm done dealing with this thing, it's over, even when it's still there, helps me. That's good. You should, should do that. Maybe. 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 Though I'm not saying put yourself in trouble. Yeah. I've been in trouble before. <laughs> Why did you want to become an MMA fighter? That's, That's like, sigh. It's like asking a fish why he wants to live in water. That's a dumb, that's a dumbest comparison ever. <laughs> if a fish is not in water, he's going to die. Except if you don't fight, you'll still survive. No, I'll, I'll die. I'll die. Yeah. I'll die. I will die if I don't fight you with me. That's the dumbest question ever. I mean, comparison we've ever heard. <laughs> nah, it's... I, I, I listened to my inner self. Remember I told you I was changing when I was in Zim, I was learning about uh, building up my self-esteem and that's what happened. I decided, okay, I want to work on myself. And then in the process of working on myself, I realized this was the path I needed to follow. I needed to get out of my comfort zone, leave my, 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 my uh, by the way, I got kicked out when I told my sister I don't want to, I don't want to join the Air Force, I don't want to go to university and stuff, I want to do martial arts. So she kicked me out, I got out of my comfort zone. Just imagine out of nowhere just being told to now take care of yourself. So that happened and as that was all that was happening, I found myself growing a lot. I left, I was uh, staying in a one bedroom apartment uh, and uh, anyway. So I did that, I stayed by myself in Zim for a couple of months, then I moved here. I have been growing since then, I can feel myself becoming a better person. And that's what this MMA thing is for me, that's why I do it. I can feel myself growing, being exposed to new situations, new environments, new countries, new people. And also, that's, this is a big thing, I've learned that the world is not as scary as we, as we thought. I grew up in Zim, right? Where it's just black people. You see white people on TV. Yes, Mr. Dante. I would see people like you on TV. And then when I came here, I was so scared of people, especially the white people. Because you're not used to seeing them. It's like, whoa. It's foreign to you. Yeah. But now, being here, I've learned that the world is all the same. We are all one. We are all one. There is no... We're all humans. Yeah, we're all humans. And the nice thing is, you, you hear a lot of negativity in the world, 
that uh, people in America, people somewhere there, which I know, no people somewhere. Okay, I'm not even gonna finish the what I wanted to say because I gave the reference of America, so I won't finish. But heading over to other things, you hear that certain countries and certain people are racist. But then you come here and you see people being super kind, super supportive. Makes you think the negativity we hear, it's so made up. Yeah, it is real, but somewhere else and not here. Not neighboring countries like here, especially not environments like this. People are super cool. And I have been learning all that because of mixed martial arts. So that's where life wanted me to go, to learn about these things. True. Well, negativity is always, it's kind of dumb and I don't like it, but negativity is always more powerful than positivity, even though it should be the opposite way, in my opinion, because mm -hmm. I don't like negativity. Like, I'm not, I'm not a negative person. I have had negative, been a negative person. I've had moments in my life that I'm being more negative than I should. But I just try to be a positive person, and like, everything I do in my life, I think of the positive result instead of the negative result. Of course, because it's, uh, it's that. Whatever you focus on, you attract. Law of attraction. You focus on negativity, you're going to attract more negativity. You focus on positive things. But then sometimes you, you, grow, you grow up in, negative, in a lot of negativity. In uh, families that are negative, communities that are negative. So you have to learn about the other side, which yeah. is not easy because when it's all you know to see the other side, it's going to take a heck of an enlightenment, just the force shining upon you, like, oh hey, there is a thing called being positive, you should try it, it's really cool, and uh, that's what happened to me, and that calling was martial arts, that's why I still do it, I know I'm going to learn a lot of things, a lot of new experiences, yeah. thanks to martial arts, but what, what's your thing, skateboarding? Yep. You should really do martial arts, dude. I did when I was younger. You should do now. Again. It's really you should do skateboarding. I should. Next thing I want to do is, what, is buy a peachy skateboard. I don't know where I'm going to get that. Oh, wait. <laughs> you own a brand. Yes. Peachy skateboarding. Yeah, I, I should. I, I, I'm really thinking about it, getting a skateboard. Aren't you worried that you're going to hurt yourself and then you hurt yourself skating and you can't do your next fight? Mm. Really, no, we've kind of left certain things to chance. Like we, we've invented words like luck, good luck, bad luck, accidents. But you realize certain things they only happen because we don't pay attention. I have been oh, I'm talking about mountain biking a lot. I've I've I fell a lot of times, more than I can care to count. But then, that was because my brain was not used to it. But each time I fell, I didn't get hurt. I, I, I had some horrible falls, but I did not get hurt because I was in the moment. So when you are fully in the moment, just observing what you're doing, but not gonna... You, your chances of making mistakes are very slim. And if, they, if you do, which you will, because your brain is not used to that, they won't be as fatal. They'll, they'll just be, oh, an accident. Oh wait, I, fall, I fell. Being, being in the moment improves your special awareness, which helps you with your balance and sure. keeping you safe. And which the, you should know about that because of skateboarding. Yes. And the more you fall, the less the less sore it becomes. Because I fall so many times skating, and it's many of the same falls. Like either I hit a stone that I didn't see on the road, or I just bail a trick that ah. I know I can land, all this kind of stuff. But the more times you you fall doing something, the less time it's going to be sore. Like, if you, the first time I hit a stone skating, it was the most painful thing ever. <laughs> now I do it, I'm like, stupid stone, I just kick it away. But like, to, so basically, the more times you do something, the less sore it's going to be. Like, it probably hurt the first time someone, you got, someone took you down in a training session, but now, when you do it, it looks oh, like nothing. It, it did a lot. It hurt a lot. You said, you said you hit a stone because you didn't see it. Yes. Why? Why didn't you see it? Because I was riding my board, I wasn't focusing on the Exactly. Stone. So, when you learn to just be aware of what's around you, you see, oh, there's a stone in front. So you see, it's, yeah. it's, it mainly comes down to just being aware. Not that you have to see all the time, but 
you have to be present in the moment. Not in your head, but mm -hmm. in the moment. Yeah, always, always look around your surroundings. Yeah, live in the flow state, which is not, it's really hard, but you gotta do it. And then you say something about falling and that doesn't hurt. Why is it that your bones get used to falling and they become numb or what? Or is it because you learn how to fall there, how to fall in a safe way? Which one is it? It's probably that your body just gets used to that feeling of falling. Exactly. And you probably, the more times you learn like, like the, the, like, like the reflect, you know what's the word? The reflexes, like you learn how to quickly put your arm out and yes. that kind of stuff. Yes. How to break your fall. How to intercept the fall and not yeah. hurt yourself. Okay. True. How do you get into the mindset for a fight? <clears throat> how do I get into the mindset for a fight? I get out of my head. It takes a lot of uh, meditation, a lot of really meditation and fasting and praying, which for me, prayer is mainly me saying words into consciousness so we can be here. Consciousness can be present. So the mind for a fight, for me, it's, it's not a, it's, I don't hype myself up. So I don't need to go, I want to fight, no. The mindful fight for me is being blank. Just being blank and being in the moment. That's why when we are in the changing room, I, I am very playful. Like I'm always being playful because for me, before I relax, I need to just let loose, be relaxed. And then I get, I get to empty my mind because I overthink. I think a lot. My mind is very active all the time, which can be annoying, but how to get into a mind for a fight? I empty my mind. I don't need to hype myself up. I don't need to picture myself killing the guy, doing spinning kicks, doing a lot of... No. My mind is blank. That's the fighting mind for me. It's like there's nothing at all in my mind. Or there shouldn't be anything at all in my mind. Then I go in there, I see a person, and then my body just starts doing stuff. And my mind is just watching. That's it. That's the mind for a fight for me. Do you have any pre-fight routines that you do? Like, do you, have, do you do some stretching before? Or do you drink water? Or what do you do? I, I used to. Like, for, for the, the first three MMA fights I had, I'll, I'll, I'll wake up early in the morning because I, I don't sleep. Dang it! I said that. I was not supposed to say that. Okay, that's good because next time I'm going to sleep. I I, 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 I I don't sleep that morning the whole night I'm, I'm awake it's like my body doesn't my mind doesn't want to shut down and but during the day my brother and I will go and watch movies we go to stay clinical there and watch movies then we'll drive back and drive to the fight that was the routine and um, but this time was different I didn't do any of the routine I'm surprised yet. to go to the movies for a fight because going to the movies makes you but sleeping. So you just like sitting there and watching? Yeah, it does. But sleepy is good because then the mind will shut down. But we don't have to sleep in the rain. No, no, no. Well, no. Which you might be onto something. Because the other fights, I, 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 was, I was super nervous, but this one, I was not. I was super relaxed. So yeah, I should really look into that, change my routine a bit. But this time, there was no routine at all. The only thing I'd say maybe was there. Oh. Two things, eating and being very talkative and playful and annoying Luca. Gotta <laughs> annoy someone. Especially Luca. And uh, Tarkin, would, no, Tarkin would be annoying me. So I like Luca more than Tarkin. Tarkin's always picking, picking on me. He's always yes. ragging me. Luca, on the other hand, he's, uh, he's kind of soft, so I can, I can, I can annoy him. He, he won't do anything. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's probably the routine. I eat a lot. When I get nerves, I, f I feel like, oh, and to eat something. Okay. Yeah, and I was eating chicken before the fight, drinking water. So that, that maybe that's the only part of the routine that I carried on to this fight. Eating and being playful before the fight. Cool. H how far are we? Uh, a quarter, uh, like, whoa, okay. halfway, three. Halfway, all right. Why did you choose the fight name, the Porcupine? Ah, nice one. Nice, uh, nice question. It's. I mean, you brought it up so many times during the during this podcast. Now we should let the viewers know why you 
Charlie the Porcupine. It's a it's a family totem. You no, know, my uh, family is in the same. They used to live in according to plans. Is in me, my fathers, my grandfather, grandfathers, great grandfathers, and theirs. So we, we, we would all live in our own village, our own little family, and uh, we have our own little community, even in, within a community. So each bloodline would have its own animal represent, representative. Like in, there's a lot, there's lions, like uh, the lion clan, the zebra clan, the buffalo clan, in shorter names of course. And uh, there's the porcupine clan, which I come from, which was a warrior clan. Like our clan was responsible for protecting villages and stuff. So we're warriors, that's why you can see these guys, they got warrior genetics in them. That's where the porc porcupine came from. But then again, some people say, you don't look like your brothers, you must be adopted. So you're not a porcupine. It, 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 you've seen, you've met Ian, right? Yes, I met your brother. He doesn't look like, doesn't look anything like me. Doesn't yeah, but then you look at my sister. She looks exactly like Ian. They look exactly like uh, like our dad. I, I'm I'm the the black sheep. <laughs> <coughs> Ooh, that's five times now. Ooh, you better get tested at this time, Jay. Oh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's uh, that's our family totem. But then yeah, someone said. Oh, not someone, but oh, kind of suspected that I may have, mom may have done something with another dude. Okay, let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and why not? We should. We're not gonna be specific about how they did it, but we're gonna talk about they did it. I mean, this is your family. <laughs> no, no it's, it's it's fine. I don't mind at all. Just imagine someday me. Just coming here and saying, oh yeah, I've changed my name to Lightning Mataya, Louis Lightning Mataya. Because I'm not really a porcupine, I was adopted or I was, or mom did something with someone who was not from the porcupine clan. Okay. <laughs> now I'm kidding, next one. Are porcupines one of your favorite animals? Well, because I talk about them a lot, they're starting to sound really cool. Because they're night creatures. Yeah. It, funny enough, I've actually never seen one. I saw one I once. I was really? I was driving with my mom on. Did it look like drive. me? No. Oh, I was driving yeah. on boys drive with my mom, and one went. My mom quickly stopped the car because one quickly ran across. At night. Yes. Oh, that's so it was too dark to take a picture. How how big was it? I don't know, like that. Big. Kind of yeah. like kind of like a a little bigger than a normal size cat. Like a like a cat you like a pet cat. Really? D did it have its curls up or tucked in? They were down. Okay. Because when when they're up, it can. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're scared. That's what I've heard. When they, if they're up, they're scared. If they're down, they're not. Because hmm. they're trying to trying to defend themselves. Yeah. Man's popular. They have got a text. Uh, probably a girl. Okay, let's check. Okay. Ooh, yep, it is. Oh, sorry. Okay. Go. Oh, they've been dropping a lot of their CVs since after that fight in the post. Ooh la la. They know the porcupines are valuable. Did I get to the question next? So, in that interview you did, that online one for that like, magazine. Yeah. They titled it that Louis Matai is going to get a girlfriend after his next fight. Mm -hmm. So, did you get a girlfriend? I wouldn't say I did not. Oh, I would say I did. Uh, we just have to leave it to this Schrodinger's cat experiment. Okay. I did and I did not. Which sounds more like I did not, but it's complicated. God, that was a really weird question. <laughs> hey, quite also the weird ones sometimes. <laughs> okay, I did not. Oh, that's fine. I like that you put your prank everyone on Facebook saying you got <laughs> No, I, I knew I knew it was false. Dude, how how could you know that? Because you said in a relationship, but you didn't say with who. That was the part that I Oh yeah. If you say with someone Wait, 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 she might not have been on Facebook. There, yes, boom! 
Ti sei? <laughs> Dai! Yeah, I, I like to mess with people. You got my dad. <laughs> yeah, I saw he commented and said, Phew! He said that, uh, that sweating emoji. <laughs> What was the journey like getting your blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? You have your blue on crap. I do. Now that was just a ridiculous time of oh, amount of time of training. And after years of just training and uh, I'm one of those people who train a lot. And SBG, if I'm not mistaken, they cannot award you a blue belt if you've been training for less than two years. I think so, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 something like that. But then, within those uh, two years, or before those, uh, before the two year mark was up, I was doing a lot of competitions, and people were they were complaining that you should be moving up a division. I even told coach, and he said, "Oh, it's not their call; it's mine." And uh, SPG standards are different, so it's not our fault. It's not our problem. But then, before the UAE comp this year in March, was it March? I think what the when was the first of March? I don't know. Mm. I wasn't there. I, I, I registered for that cup and then the day of the way in, because you were in the day before, the coach read the rules somewhere. They, one of the rules say an amateur champion cannot compete in the white belts division, so they had to bump me up to the blue belts division. And oh man, I was nervous. Uh, then what? Just being bumped up in, in, your, in a day's notice to the, to the monsters division. Cause I feel like it's the worst, the Bluebirds division. Got a lot of okay. people want to prove themselves. Yeah. Anyway, that's how the journey was. But it was exciting. I loved it. Enjoyed it a lot. Matt Thornton gave you a blue belt on crap. No. My dad. Yeah, it was coach. Huh? It's coach. Just checking. It's coach. Uh, probably gonna get a black from uh, Matt Which in about a... I don't know how many years from now. <laughs> Just enjoy the journey. Oh, that's the thing. It's about MMA for me. I love gyms. I love it a lot. But I do it so I get good at fighting. Yeah. Mm. Do you think MMA classifies an, as an extreme sport? Yes, it does. And yes, why? Yes, it does. You've got two people in there with tiny little gloves, shin bones, uh, elbows. It's like the modern day gladiator arena yeah I, I honestly i honestly feel like a gladiator it's i would say the harshest sport or environment in 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 in, in, in modern days and uh when you get in there you're facing off with someone the cage is closed or the ring you cannot leave you get that moment where you ask yourself like dang what am i doing okay can i not just and in the ring it's fine, but when you're walking to the ring, it's like you honestly feel like just dropping down and snapping your arm so you can not fight. <laughs> it's 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 a, it's crazy. It's beyond harsh. It's crazy. Yeah. But then through training and through that will and that fire, you you conquer that uh, that devil, that evil part of yourself that asks you. Why? Why do this? But it is the worst environment ever, especially in modern day. Okay. Cool. What do you think about it? I don't know, it's a weird one for me. Because martial arts, like, the way they structure MMA fights, like how the UFC does it, wouldn't fit into how X Games does, does their event, because X Games is more in like a, in like a festival style, where they'll be like, one thing will be like skateboarding, then you move on to BMX, then there's motocross, and then there's big air, mega ramp foot skating, and then they'll go to like gaming. So it's like, it doesn't fit in that kind of, in the kind of setting, like the way X Games does it. Like the UFC and all how fighters don't should stay how they're done. But, I, but it kind of does fit more into the extreme sports category than let's say like soccer and rugby, even though Rugby is probably as dangerous as MMA. Might be even more dangerous because no one's really stopping the the match compared to with MMA. Once you can tell the the one the one competitor is struggling, they stop it. That's like a mis. That's like something people get wrong. I think boxing safer than MMA, but it's actually the opposite. way MMA is safer because once you can tell the guy is struggling, he can tap and say like, 
I can't handle this, although the metaphor just immediately stop it. Compare with boxing, the, there's like that five second countdown and the guy's on the ground and he does stand up before the countdown's over, they continue the fight even though the guy clearly looks like he can't handle it. So MMA is way safer than like boxing and like American football is one of the most dangerous sports because with all the head people just like running into each other. That, that, uh, that, that makes sense. There is a yeah. point there. But it fits more in the extreme sports category than, let's say, soccer and, like, tennis. That's where you'd put MMA. I'd put it more into the extreme sports category. But uh, I feel like it's not as dangerous as people think it is. Oh, dude, you have no idea how dangerous it is. It's safer than boxing. Just because oh. of, boxing would be safer if it did. Also, the, the, the bigger gloves are actually more dangerous because people punch harder. Because they think it's not going to hurt as much. Really? Yeah. Have you seen people after the, the fights bleeding and having cuts? Yeah. The, the thing that makes it more dangerous is in boxing, if you get hit to, 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 to the head and you drop, yes, they allow you to get up and they count and they check to see if you're okay, right? Yes. And that gives you a little bit of time to regain your senses and to go come back to normal. MMA is based on a street fight situation where it's the fight is yeah about points yes to determine who the winner is but it's to the death which does not sound cool but that's that's the truth it's like in a street fighting situation so if someone clips you and you you, you your legs give out boxing they'll pause and make sure you're okay and stuff or maybe you drop oh, and really? ask you to stand up yeah, boxing. If, if you fall they'll ask you to stand up and then count to check if you're okay yeah, if you can continue fighting yes because but in MMA that's what makes it worse because if you get clipped and you fall, person is not gonna wait you to recover, the referee is not gonna step in. Yeah. So he's just gonna keep hurting you. So the goal would be the referee will stop it. Why? So he don't die. Because if he does not, you're gonna die. You're gonna get seriously hurt. Yes. So the rules are based on a real life fighting situation. Which makes it even more dangerous. More dangerous than? The boxing. The boxing is more dangerous. Boxing is only more dangerous because of the, the rules like the countdown to, to five. Like if you stand up before the ref's done the countdown, even though you clearly look like you can't handle it, they'll continue the fight. And with the bigger gloves, people punch harder because... They punch harder, yes, and the force is concentrated. It's, 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 uh, it's spread. A anyway, it, the, the risk factor is it's, it's, it's a bit different. It's yeah. really hard to compare the two, especially for me because I've never done boxing, I've only watched it on TV, but I've done MMA and I know how horrible it feels in there. Yeah. So yeah. Also with MMA, the fights end sooner than boxing. Exactly. Why? Because there's a lot of things being thrown at you. You're uh, getting, and, and you can do if, if you've ever been kicked by the shin, ever been punched, so there's a lot of things happening. In boxing, you can move your head and be safe. In MMA, if you move your head, you're gonna get taken down, you're gonna... There's a lot of stuff happening. That's probably the main reason why it would be more dangerous, more dangerous. yeah, and extreme. Yeah. But... It's, well, it's, well, the MMA fight is easier to... I wouldn't say... It's easier to win an MMA fight because there's so many different ways of winning. You can win by knockout, you can win by choking out, you can... Win by points. There's so many different ways of boxing, and mainly just mainly either it's a TKO or all you have to knock out, or you literally just go through all those rounds and you win by points. Mm. So it's kind of safer. Martial MMA fights are kind of more safer in the way that the fights can end quicker. I, I agree with you. I agree. I'll just check out two words: easier and safer. I'll take those two words out of that oh, sentence. Why that? Why? Because if you're on the other end of uh, the techniques where you are, you, you, you don't have as much knowledge, don't have as much conditioning, as much experience, it's the opposite of safe and it's the opposite of easy. Okay. So it is, I would say it gives you options. Yeah, I would say that. It gives you more options. And, uh, it has, if you're experienced enough, it has loopholes that you can, you can utilize, you can take advantage of. Someone is really good at striking, you can tie him up, take him down, and make the odds heavy in your favor. True. Easy and uh, safe? No.
Okay. Would you ever do a boxing match? MMA does look more fun. Yeah, he does. Yeah, I would. I would. What, just for experience? Yeah. Oh. And, <clears throat> and just for the experience. You did say that, right? I said would you ever do it. But I said would you do it for the, just for the experience. Yeah. Yeah. I would do it for that. And just for the craziness of it. Or craziness of me. I, I, I would get in a boxing ring and box someone. Because I know I can tie up if I get... And I know it's going to be really hard for the guy to hit me because of other things which I want to say where people can hear me like this. I would. I would do it. Cool. And I'll knock them out. What's your diet like for your fights in just normal day life? Almost the same. Almost the same. I got my dad playing music. <laughs> I'm gonna... I'm gonna tell I think, I think it's cool. <laughs> Dad, we don't need your music playing on me. Hey, be nice. Great for music, man. Yeah, but I did. I I I, I did tell him. Can you please keep it down? Yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Not up. Is this camera still recording? Yep. Okay, cool. <laughs> Been going for an hour and a half. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so okay. What's your diet like for your fights and normal life? Almost the same. I, I eat uh, I clean. I don't eat chunk stuff. I eat super clean. I like to eat my uh, my rice, my carbs. Love my carbs. Clean carbs. Try to get as much fiber as I can. And uh, I try in fight camp. I add a lot of protein. Which like more meat. Yeah, meat. And uh, sometimes I do take protein supplements just to help because. MMA, the training, the conditioning, it's a bit, in, it's a lot intense. So your body needs to sustain itself. It needs a lot of protein. It needs to build up uh, broken stuff, which you do break a lot in fight camp. So yeah, it's almost the same, except sometimes a little bit less carbs and more protein in fight camp. And I don't need to cut weight. I'm always fighting at either lightweight or featherweight, which I don't need to cut weight. So that's good. Because cutting weight is probably the worst part about doing a fight. <clears throat> so I'm not looking for And a lot of people who actually lose their fights, it's not because they're bad fighters or anything, it's mainly because... The bad weight cut. The cutting weight drains them so much. I'm not keen to do it. I... 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 weight would not be a big cut for me. But... I kind of like feather weight because I walk around at 69. I can do the muscle to 70, 71, then get cut down to 66. Yeah. That's what I feel like uh, for me is the best. Apparently the UFC was going to cut out the feather weight division. Really? Yeah. You put what? Just lightweight and bantamweight? Well, well, there wasn't much fighters in it, so oh. I'm, I'm cutting. But I don't know if that's still happening. That was just like some idea Dana had. When? He mentioned it like a few months ago. Few months ago, I think the featherweight was one of the most popular divisions. Well, I don't know. I mean, yes, you do have middleweight and lightweight as being the most dominant. But then I thought featherweight was the next. That's the main reason why I want to fight featherweight, because I don't like fighting tiny people. <laughs> like bantamweights, they can be really annoying. Fighting someone who's faster than you because yeah. they're smaller. I would prefer to fight someone a bit bigger. I could be wrong about the fact that they might cut featherweight, but I heard my dad say they're gonna cut one division. Was it not flyweight? Yes, it was flyweight. I got ah, it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> hey. hey, it's unscripted. I'm just going over where I remember. <laughs> now I I I heard that I heard that as well. But they, they are they they they're not being too serious about it. it was. They put it into consideration, yeah. but now they're cool, I think they're okay. Well, on the um, Hot Ones episode that I sent it to you, the one that uh, Alessani was with. I that, that oh, boxer. yeah, the hot sauce thing. Yeah, the boxer, I don't know what the boxer's name is. Anton Joshua. Yeah. One of the questions for Alessani was what would he do if he was in charge of the UFC? And he said he would add more um, weight categories. <sighs> Maybe we do, they do. Oh, I, did you hear that? I said we. I'm making myself a part of the UFC. <laughs> Lewis White. Lewis White. Uh, no, Lewis Porcupine. Okay, I'm a fighter, not a promoter. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, people are. Okay, 
maybe between water weight and light weight because that's 70 to 77 they could put something there like in between maybe just that not to mention or oh, hear people say paying fighters more which i know you do not ask but i just thought that i should mention it why do you uh, pay fighters more of course who wants to be beat up or well, beat someone up for just a tiny bit of i agree that fighters should be paid more because they're getting injured and mm. that kind of stuff but i also kind of get why they're not getting paid as much it's kind of the same like, yeah. like why skate. why would you get something like that it's kind of like it's skateboarders because they also like going out there and putting their bodies on the line but it's also the same thing is is like well, okay, well with the UFC they are they are selling like before all this COVID stuff they were selling like arenas every fight and you know that kind of stuff so I don't really get why they couldn't add more money to the to the fighters but maybe there's not enough like I don't know sponsorship even though every UFC has got like too many sponsors so someone was comparing but yet, but yet again like basketball players are at arenas probably way more than fighters do that, that's the thing someone was comparing uh, MMA to boxing. We also must understand as fighters that the sport is still growing. It's not young. Yeah, it's not there yet where every fighter can make millions of dollars. Yeah. So it kind of comes down to individuals. Like, how do you sell yourself? How do you. Well, a lot of fighters, even with boxers, they make most of their money outside of the sport. Yeah. Like, Connor makes money with his whiskey, and yeah. Mike Tyson has a weed farm. The... Oh, what? He has one of the biggest weed farms in the For world. Real? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> Tyson Ranch. I wanna go over there and burn it. I don't like that stuff. Well, that's me, which I know it's cool. Well, T is... T uh, CBD, that's what it's called. CBD is actually good for you. It's basically weed, but without the... They take out the stuff that makes you high. It helps people fall asleep. I... Know, dude. I, uh, I like to keep it natural, you know? The mind as it is, leave it as it is. Yeah. I don't alter, I don't try to. That's why I don't drink, I don't smoke. It's just that I like the mind as it is, it's really cool. But then most people it's messed up, so they gotta find a way to calm it down. Yeah. Anyway, I did not say that. If I did, I was kidding. I'm not gonna be sued. Okay. <laughs> Alright. What other exercises do you do besides martial arts? I hate running. Me I do. <laughs> We had, we had sports days at school, and the first thing we start off with is the lap challenge, where people we get people to sign and then they'll put money towards to help. Like there's money, you get money. People put like how much money they put towards, and it goes towards helping you know pay for stuff at the school. I hated that so much. I I ran and then I hid it behind a tree just so I didn't have to do it, but I got caught by a teacher. <laughs> I was good at sprinting. Like when it was just short sprints, I was good. Exactly. Uh, I, I can run, I can run a marathon, I can, but it just annoys me doing that one foot in front of the other for hours. It, 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 it's like, oh, I, I, I do it when I have someone doing it with me. And what I love more is sprinting, short sprints, short sprints. Those I can do, because I, I can do it, and then I'm done. I've worked, I'm done. Didn't you go um, trail running once with Phil? Phil and I go a lot together, but that's because I go because I'm with someone. I, I, for me to do it by myself, like oh. that's socializing. Yeah, that's that, that's exactly. And also, I know it's good for me, so I have someone who is keen to do it, so I do it, and it, that's okay then. Well, I get the point of trail running more than road running because at least there you you going uphill and you have yeah. more to it than just running, and also you're out in nature. Yeah. Road running, just that, looks, that, road, road running just looks boring. Yeah. But what's worse boring. is those people who pay to go to silver mine, but they run on the road there. <laughs> they basically just want like something nice to look at while they're running. Yeah, that does make sense. But if you're gonna pay to to use them to use the mountain, you might as well go on the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, going back to your question about what other exercises I do, I do my conditioning at home. It involves involves a lot of uh, elastic band exercises uh, like a, I, I don't know what the names of these things but I do I use that stretchy band thing yeah and that resistance band it's a resistance band where you step on it and do like a snatch clean and press that I do a lot of that I do a lot of that heat you know high intensity training I do a lot of that burpees sit-ups 
squats, jump squats, that of that. Are you jump squats? Yeah, they're really cool. Yeah, they are really, really cool. That's, I, I got into that during lockdown because of course online sessions. So yeah, that, I, I, and I never stopped, I still do that. I, I find it really cool. Do you, do you still lift weights? Yeah, I do. I do. Well, oh, I shouldn't be saying this, it's going to feed into Tarkin's ego, but it's going to be Who knows he's actually going to listen to this? I'm going to make him do it. He might, it. he might start it and then say he doesn't want to do it. I'll ask, him a, I'll ask him a million questions about what we're talking about. I'm going to make him listen to it. Everyone at this video, I'm going to force him to listen to it. Well, not everyone. But, yeah. I, I, I do lift weights because it's good for me. The weights, calisthenics and uh, movement training. Really good. You want to be one of those buff people? Ugh, that rock. No, no, I want to be like talking. Heck no. Those, those buff people like a rock and and that um, guy who competes in strongman of AD Hall. But that that those people just look at unnatural. Yeah. Because AD Hall's got like a huge arms and a huge like stomach area and the chest area, but then his legs are smaller than his chest and just look. It looks unnatural and freaky. <laughs> the two things that work more is. My lower body and my core. Yeah, that's good. Because I pull a lot from my core and I do a lot of things. So I've I seen you like pull-ups. Yes. And I love my abs. Even when you ask Batman, he's like, he's gonna agree. In the, is this a Lego movie? Someone asked Batman over how to be a superhero, a good superhero and stuff. And he said, first you gotta look after your abs. That's the main thing you gotta look after. You wanna be good? Work on your abs. Yes. You wanna be efficient in fighting? Work on your abs. Yeah. Because even in my, I think it was in the first Iron Man movie, there was a montage of him training and he's doing sit ups and pull ups and that kind of stuff. It's all in the abs. You gotta look good. Abs. Even if you don't have uh, biceps and stuff, you can still flex and still look really cool if you have these dudes. Okay. Which I don't. I've got a gut. See, this is a. What's it called? It's a fat roll. Look fat. at it. I'm grabbing it. I'm grabbing a fat roll here. I got fat too. Not, <laughs> not gonna show on camera because I don't want to disgust people. <laughs> okay. Speaking of Batman, you know the villain Harley Quinn? Yes, I know her. I've been watching the Harley Quinn animated series lately and it's very good. She is her own series? Yes, it's an animated show. It's about her. But what the cool thing about the show is, is it's not just um, limited to, to her and Batman characters. <coughs> they feature all kinds of different characters. So. So like all like the whole Justice League have been in there, Superman, uh, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, all of them have been in there. There's been episodes just featured, just specializing in Batman, where Harley Quinn doesn't even feature. And you know, oh cool. really? It's also very funny. They make fun of Batman. Like there's, there's lots of jokes about uh, you know I'm Commissioner Gordon. Yeah. yeah. There's jokes about him and. Is it on Netflix? Uh no, I have it on my computer. I can give it to you if you want. Cool, that'll be cool. It's a it's a funny show. They make fun of DC all the time in there. But it's also good in that it's not just a funny show, it's also like it's a good story too. Okay, okay. Yeah. I I'll be keen to to There's watch lots that. of jokes like Commissioner Gordon's trying to act like wants wants Batman and him to be more than friends, he's like, no, we just we just work partners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in you know, a lot of shows like Teen Titans Go, they do make a lot yeah. of fun of fun. I don't like Teen Titans Go. It's dumb. What? Also, the animation is so cheap. Think, yeah, it's very, very cheap, but... But the movement you, is good. You, you, you watch it again... For the for just Yeah, that, that's the main reason why I watch it. I get home, I'm bored, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna put an episode of Teen Titans. I, watch, I end up watching five or six, but just for the laughs, just for fun. Though I kind of like the Teen Titans movie, Teen Titans mm -hmm. got other movies. Yes. That was pretty good. With Slade. Yes. <laughs> The village slayed. Yeah. Oh, that was cool. The, the only problem I have with that movie is that lots of the jokes um, drag for too long. It's like they did the same joke where they used the same joke in the trailer where Slade goes, No, because they make fun of him and think he's Deadpool and like, No, oh, I am slayed. And then the Titans go, And they said, Slayed. Slayed. No, that joke, it was, it was shorter in the trailer, so it was more funny than actually in the movie. Ah, um, kind of liked it. Yeah, everyone's humor is different. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I think it was uh, Robin who went first, then uh, Cyborg, then Beast Boy, just going slick and making faces. Yeah. I think it was cool. Though a lot of that movie was basically just 
It felt like a bunch of people just sat in a room together and made up jokes. And then they kind of tattered the story around their jokes. Because it's like random stuff in that movie like... Like they made fun of the Lion King with Robin. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of that stuff is kind of like stuff you just see on YouTube. Like, 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 or, like it would trend on YouTube because people go, oh, this is funny and it's animated well. But that's one of the things I love about the Teen Titans. You don't know what to expect. Sometimes they can, like, did you watch their self indulgement show? Indulgement episodes? No. Okay, where the Titans realized they were a TV show and they were about to get cancelled. I've seen the episode where where they found, where it was a it was a two hundredth episode, and then they found out and they did a thing where they animated all the voice actors in the show, and then the t Titans found out met their um voice actors. Exactly, that that's the one. That's yeah. the one. So you you didn't expect that, which it's uh it's it's one of those things which makes it really cool because you can kind of take that and copy that and use that in real life to just expect the unexpected. No one who hears, the, who hears this, which I'm saying now, will get it. Okay. Getting ideas from cartoons and anime to use in real life. But then again, like you said, we're different, we're people. Anyway, hit me up with the next one. Well, we're done with the MMA portion. And now? Now we're just going to chat about cartoons and that Japanese thing people watch called anime. <laughs> Though I have seen some anime. Wait, you said you have seen some. I, are you not an anime person? Not really. <gasps> Ugh. I... Ugh. I don't like you anymore. I've Jack watched it. Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, but that's a American Did you watch anime. Legend of Korra? Yes. That's is it a, good? Better than, better than Avatar in my opinion. Yeah, uh, some people say not. I think it's Some better. people say it's the more, last it's more, airbender is... It's more adult. Okay. Which is why I don't like it. I've watched those, but those are American animes. And I've watched uh, a little bit of Dragon Ball Z, didn't really like it. Really? Yeah, not really my thing. Why? It just wasn't my thing. Why is that? You don't like Kamehameha's? <laughs> no. How, how can you like... How can you not like Dragon Ball Z but still like Star Wars? I. I mean, that's Star Wars. I just got this as a gift once. Oh, dude, you don't like Star Wars? I like Star Wars, but I'm not crazy about it. Yeah, yeah I, I do too. like. Me too. I, I do like the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Who is it's that? It's the first ever live action Star Wars show, and it's about the Mandalorian. And he's a he's a bounty hunter, and he, and he travels around the galaxy. It takes place before Luke Skywalker was even born, and that's where Baby Yoda comes from. Hmm. To be honest, I, I, I've never watched a lot of Star Wars movies. Neither have I. I've watched, I've watched the originals growing up with my dad, but I wasn't hooked to them as the same I was with superheroes. <laughs> the, the, the only thing that I like about Star Wars is the idea of the Force. Why well, you want to have Force? Besides me wanting to have it, it's, it's, it's a thing. It's like there was something there. What's your opinion on the Force? Cool. It's cool. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> I, 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 I just like it. It's the main thing I love about uh, the Force because there is something similar in real life. Anyway, let's not talk about that because <clears throat> when you start talking about certain things, yeah. you insult the other, other people. The other the anime I've seen in a real life was uh, One Punch Man. Yeah, that was cool. It's funny. That was cool. Yeah. yeah funny. Would you say that's an adult anime? Or? Yes, it is. Oh, uh, it is, but kids can watch it. Yeah. It's a family show, I'll put it there. Yes, yeah. for both ages. Yeah. And then, I have a question for you, Dr. Fire away. You watch a lot of anime, superhero movies. Uh, no, not a lot of anime, you watch Cartoons. animations, yes. Yes, I Cartoons do. Cartoons and uh, superhero movies. Yes, this... I do. yes, I do. So, in a way, you'd say you, 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 you like this form of entertainment, which is unrealistic, as in cartoons, made up, or uh, really strange and cool. Why? Why is that? Just entertaining. But I do like um, watching stuff that is realistic, that can be realistic. Like, and that's why I like Batman, why he's one of my favorite superheroes, because he's just this normal guy yeah, but he's strong. What's, what's with you in these superheroes and stuff, and these kind of things, why do you watch that? Do you ever ask yourself that? Like no. cartoons and... Because when you... When you Look at certain people. Some certain people don't like this. They like they are like 
they say we are realists, we love stuff that is real, stuff that is... My dad doesn't really like animation. Oh, exactly. But he does like, he likes the movie The Incredibles. Why is that? I don't know, he just watched it as a kid. <laughs> I, I watched with him a lot when we were kids and I don't know, he just liked the movie, I think. Mm. I used to call him Mr. Incredibles when I was younger. <laughs> he, he does look like Mr. Incredible. And oh, my dad, he's a super and my dad, dad likes The Simpsons. Really? Yeah, but he doesn't watch it anymore. Oh, okay. But he does like it. Which year did The Simpsons came out? Somewhere in the 90s. Ah, that's why. That's why. Because I haven't been watching them since then. Still it's going on. <laughs> it's the longest running show of all time. How, how, which season are they on now? I think it's 31 or 32. Ooh, hoo -hoo. That's a lot. Yeah. And how many episodes in each season? Well, 20 yeah. something. 20 something? Just 20 something? Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. So you want to know why I like cartoons and this kind of stuff? Mm. I don't know, it's just it's entertaining, it's fun. I don't know, cartoons are just fun to watch and easy to watch. Uh, tell you why I love it. Why do you love it? It's because... Especially the... Because in cartoons and stuff, there's a hero, right? There's uh, like a person who saves the day, a group of people who save the day. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. And then there's people who get saved. For me, I, I love that because that's what I want for me. I want to be a hero, but not for people, but for myself. Normally, we, we talked about this a uh, little bit with Coach. Normally, people want something to believe in. And I love that because it goes beyond. You know, it, there are a lot of unrealistic stuff. In, uh, in cartoons, they do crazy things. In superhero movies, you see people flying. Yeah. So for me, it kind of inspires me because I want to be my own hero. I don't want to put my faith in something else or someone else. Yeah, you do need to have faith in people, but I want to have myself as my own hero. So I want to get as much strength and encouragement as possible. And the kind of the amount of strength I need, I cannot get it in real life. No, so I'm going to get it somewhere else and be my own hero, stand up for myself, fight for myself. And when you're your own hero, you become other people's hero as well. But you gotta save yourself first before you can save anyone else. That is true. That's why I love unrealistic stuff. Because they teach me to be a hero. My own hero. How did you get into watching cartoons and anime? Uh, that's a question I don't even know. It's like... It's... Kind of just happened. Yeah. And it's something that uh, I felt drawn to it. You know, when you have something in you, something that's out there, they just kind of, oh yeah, that's cool. There's me, there's... Anime, there's uh, cartoons. That phase as a child where everyone loves cartoons, and then as you grow up, you grow out of it. It never happened for me. I never grew out of that. Same to me. Yes. I still get excited when I hear there's going to be a new animated movie. <laughs> Though I am a bit more picky of which ones I watch nowadays, but I do yeah. still watch most of them. Yeah, me too. Me too. Like, there, there's this anime called Charlotte on Netflix. Have you watched it? Yeah, no, no, no. But yeah, just check it out. It's about dancing girls and I uh, just went, no, oh, no. But then I, I, I saw something, uh, Cyborg 009 Call of Justice or something. Yeah. I was like, yes, that's the one. It, because those cyborgs, I, I read, and those cyborgs were heroes. They were saving the world. I wouldn't say I want to save the world as such, but I want to be, I want to save myself. I want to be strong. That's good. Because then I know other people can be saved from that. Again, you go to what's what's this? Into the Spider Verse. Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. Amazing movie. Amazing with the best. My dad called it a movie for ten year olds. <laughs> <laughs> but then when uh, what's his name? What, the main character. Yeah. Miles Morales. Miles. When Miles was struggling to be a hero, someone told him, "Don't try to save the world. Don't try to save the city. Just save one person." And he wanted to save his dad. Uh, wouldn't you say that was cool? Yeah. By wanting to save his dad, he ended up saving his... The world. The, the, the world, no, yeah. Well, the the world. Many worlds, many dimensions. Yeah. He ended up saving many dimensions. That is true. Wouldn't you want to use that in real life? Yeah. Don't try to impress people. Don't try to yeah. save the world. Just make the world a better place for one person. And you see the whole world would be an amazing place. Spider-Man and Spider-Man has become one of my favourite movies. I've seen it four times. Ah, oh, dang it, you've watched it more than I have. I've only watched it twice.
It's made by one of my favorite directing duos in Hollywood. Who? Cool. Phil Lord and Chris Miller. They're the people that have done the cool movies like they did Spider Verse and then they did the Lego movie, Lego Batman. They ah, did... so they do any animations? Yeah, they did. Well, they, they do some live action stuff. They like. They did the Twenty One and Twenty Two Jump Street, which are funny. Have I watched it? No, I have not. I've heard about it. Yeah. They worked on the Star Wars movie Solo, but I've never seen it. Han Solo. That was a movie about him. Oh. But I never watched it. I, I did. I watched it. I did. Do you like it? No. Yeah, apparently it wasn't that good. <laughs> yeah, it was... They finished that movie, those two guys, working on it. But they got fired by Disney during the process. They got fired while they were working on the movie? Yes, by Disney. So they had to replace with other... Mm. Or what? They, fi they finished working on the movie, but they don't work for Disney anymore. And now, where are they? They're doing stuff at Sony, doing animated movies. Oh, that's... Because Sony's the one that made part of this. Which one is better, Sony or Disney? Depends. Or oh, which one is bigger? Disney. Mm. Or Sony makes tech. Disney. As, but Sony makes tech as well, like they make the PlayStation and phones and TVs. But Sony, but Disney owns like Fox, Marvel, ESPN, Star Wars. So. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah. So, hmm, I must really look into this uh, whole Disney, Sony, which ones own what, how many does it own, which one is bigger thingy. Because I often, I, I heard something with Spider-Man, before Spider-Man 2 came out, was it? Where they were saying, it's no longer part of Disney or Sony, what was that? What was that? that? Oh, that, that got resolved. Yeah, but what was happening? So basically, Spider-Man Far From Home made over like a billion dollars. It was yeah. a very successful movie. And Sony, Sony is the company that owns the rights to Spider-Man. So that's the only Marvel character Disney doesn't have the rights to. And they had a deal where, where they can use Spider-Man in like the Avengers movies, but when it comes to the so when it comes to the the solo Spider-Man movies, Sony gets more of the money. And then Disney wanted to split the deal, but Sony said no, because Disney was like make it half. Meanwhile, all Disney got out of that deal, as far as I know, was that they got like all the so Sony made all the money with the movie, but more but Disney made like all the money with the merchandise and that kind of stuff. Okay. But Disney, Marvel, Sony only owns the rights to use Spider-Man in movies, but Disney got the rights to like all the merchandise, like all the toys, shirts, comics, and they are the ones that only make Spider-Man cartoons. Uh, so basically Sony, Disney was being greedy and Sony was like, nope, we're taking our character. <laughs> <laughs> so if they take their character, they would But now they, now they made a deal, and now they're going to be in a third Spider-Man movie with uh, Tom Holland. Mm, I don't like Tom Holland. He's my favorite Spider-Man actor. Yeah, he's, he's an actor, he's good, but as a person, I'm like, oh, Tom. Right. Like can't, you, can't you just get hit by a bus or something? But you don't I did not say that. You do not like Tom Holland. The name Tom. It's a, yeah. sim it's a simple name. I, I, did, I did not say that. Okay. Yeah. And I did not say... I feel like punching him in the face each time I see him. No, I did not say that. Okay. Let's just move on. I like Tom and that's all that matters. Yeah. Which one do you prefer? Anime or cartoons? Anime. Without a question. Anime. And why? Do you like it because they're more action based shows? The story, I like the story. Cartoons. One episode you get one thing and the next you get another thing. But anime tells the story. That's the main thing I love about it. Okay, cool. That's the main thing I love about it. And you? Well, I haven't seen much anime, so I'm good at cartoons. Ah. But there are some really good action cartoons. Yeah, of course. Well, I watch a lot of those. But if I was to be asked like you did, which one is the best, I would say like I did. Anime. Because of the story. Alright. Yeah. Okay. What's favorite cartoons or cartoon characters of all time? You can name anime characters and shows if you want. I think Goku is pretty cool. Spiky hair, porcupine clothes. Yeah, gotta love that. But then he was so in love with fighting. You relate to him? Yeah. He he he, he loved fighting. He loved training. He loved testing himself. He loved pushing himself beyond the limits. 
And that is something that someone like me would admire, something that I think would be really cool. Oh, that's cool. Mm. But then again, the, the, the characters that I, 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 I love as well, I'm, I'm, if I'm to mention one, it would be Goku, but then I'll mention a type of character that I love. It's that character who faces himself, you know? Someone who goes inside, does a lot of inner work, works on themselves, checks their ego, learns how to be a better person. If there was an anime character like that in any anime, whether it's a villain or cartoon or a hero, I would like that. For instance, Thanos. He was a cool dude. He was an evil dude. Yeah, he was evil for the greater good, just that people didn't see it. Though out of all the Marvel villains, he was the best. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I would say he was a hero. A lot of the standalone uh, Marvel movies, like the ones based on like one character, normally are sucky villains, but Thanos was the best. Though Spider-Man has good villains, like um, in Far From Home, uh, Mysterio was really good. Yeah, he, he was good. He Batman was good. has his good villains. <sighs> I, I, I worry he's got too many villains, Batman. Well, they focus mostly on on Joker. Joker, yes. But have you seen the trailer for the up and coming Batman movie? Like a real action movie? Yeah. Robert Pattinson's going to be the new Batman. Who, who is Robert Pattinson? He's famous for being the Twilight movies. Wait, that dude? Yeah. That skinny dude? Hey, he looks buff now. <laughs> really? Yeah, he's been training. Ah, uh, shit, couldn't they be well, causing no. some, someone, uh, someone, yeah, someone, I don't know. Just, yeah, but that's good because the Batman also. He's, remember, his biggest weapon is his mind. Yeah. It's not really his muscles. Because yeah. you got Superman for that. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I suppose he'll do. Ugh, just, just, just wait. Can't imagine it. Look at him. Just wait and see. Skinny. Just wait and see the movie. Is, is the trailer on YouTube? Yes. I'm gonna watch it. What's it called? Batman what? It's just called The Batman. So it's like they've, they're gonna retell the story, they're gonna reboot it. Not necessarily. Because they're gonna do Justice League with first they had the single Batman movies, that means stuff. Yeah. And then they they've had I don't know how many reboots. Yeah. I don't know if this is a reboot like, but just wait and see. But what I'm saying is in this one in this Batman movie, in the trailer they're they're showing off that the uh, that the Riddler will be in it. Riddler? Yeah. yeah. I like that they're moving away from just using the Joker all the time. Even though he's that even the Joker is cool. I like the Riddler that much. I like him. Did he have Riddle muscles? He's not really a strong guy. He's, he's, he's really, really smart. He's, yeah, he's, he, uh, he freaks out Batman's mind. <laughs> That's what he does. Yeah, uh, challenging, uh, challenging villain. Not yeah. uh, just muscles, no brawling, no thinking. Yeah. Which is not cool. I want to see a lot of brawling. I want to see a lot of muscles and hitting. Man likes action. Yeah, I love action. <laughs> Alright, dude, I'm getting really hungry. <laughs> what drew you to cartoons more than live action stuff? Just something that has always been with you. Since growing up, you'd ask me to. Which one do you prefer? Cartoons? Before even I finish the question, cartoons. It's because there is something that's within that feels attracted to those things. Like my inner world is very different. It's very. I don't know how other people's inner worlds are. But mine likes cartoons. It, it likes that world of infinite possibilities. Yeah, like anything can happen. Yeah, anything is possible. Like in my mind, I'm always uh, doing really, really extreme stuff. Either flying and stuff or what, but deep down I do feel like, And it's also that warrior spirit thing, that warrior DNA thing that runs in me. So it kind of gets attracted to those things. Cartoons, fighting. Superheroes, the stuff. That's the kind of world that I feel like I belong. One reason I can tell why I drew more to cartoons is also because you can do anything in them, which is really cool. But one reason why I drew to it is mainly because a lot of live action, like like teen child sitcoms, are terrible. <laughs> like I've gone back and rewatched some that like I grew up with. High School just, Musical. I I what like this one. Sorry? I used to like that a bit too much. <laughs> I think for, one birthday, people... for one of my birthdays, my, I asked my dad to buy me the High School Musical 2 album. I used to listen to the, to the song on the way to school. It's a phase we all 
Zac Efron did a, he, he, he really made a teenage years interesting. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, they brought back High School Musical. What do you mean brought back? On um, Disney Plus, which is like Disney's version of Netflix. They have High School Musical, the series, where it's basically a show where, where the kids are recreating, recreating scenes from High School Musical because all these kids go to the high school where they film High School Musical. It's kind of like, I haven't watched that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 I mean, it's one of those, uh, the timeless classics. Timeless classics? Yeah. They, I, they, I don't think so. Yeah, I think a lot of teens, oh no. It was very popular. Yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of people still watch it. Uh, but no, Just for, it's for memories. Yeah. Nostalgia. But I, it's like, for me, it's like, ugh, I used to watch that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> They are not embarrassed with the cartoons I used to watch, it's just the live action stuff. Cartoons, no. Yeah. Cartoons, never. There's only like two, no, not two, there's only like three old car, old uh, sitcoms, like teen sitcoms I used to watch, so they're actually still good. Which ones? Drake and Josh, by Carly. Yeah, 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 and, that I used to watch too. And The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody is still pretty good, but... You know what, that's cool, I think it's because it's more... Relatable. And these two, these two dudes making fun, and then yeah. they grew up. Still, yeah. you know, they started when they were very young, and then as they got bigger, they still kept going, still kept yeah. making the show. So yeah, and those two were they really twins or what? I I, I never well, got that. Zach and Cody. Yeah. Yes, they're twins in real life. Really? Yes. <laughs> that that's one question that was never answered up here. I've always wondered, are they real twins or...? What was Drake and Josh, the only reason the show got made was because the two actors were on a different show together and then they had good chemistry because chemistry they were friends in real life so Nickelodeon was just like, let's make a show about you two Drake and Josh, Drake and Josh, was, was it a Disney thing? Nickelodeon Ah, I, I do remember Drake and Josh, it's just that I didn't watch a lot of it, that's why it was uh... Yeah, I remember those days, Dragon Josh, Pair of Kings, yeah. and a lot of other shows. <laughs> they were right. cool. But then we'd fight with my uh, my, 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 my nieces. Because when they were watching that or those shows, I wanted to watch cartoons. <laughs> I wanted to watch uh, Cartoon Network, watch and a lot of other cool stuff or back ben then. Ten. It's Ben 10, Robot Boy, and uh, Samurai Jack. Samurai Jack. <laughs> Are they still making someone like Jack? They did one more season to end the show. I think I stopped watching it. Ugh, a long time ago. Yeah. But the creator of Samurai and Jack has a new show called Primal, which is epic. It's a show about a caveman and a dinosaur, but the whole show has no dialogue in it. You can, it's, only, it's only sound effects, and there's lots of violence in it. I'm not gonna watch that. There's like, it's like one voice actor for the caveman, but all he does is just grunting noises. <laughs> Mm, not talking? Yeah, I suppose. Is there a Netflix? No. Then I'm definitely not gonna watch it. I was thinking maybe when I don't have anything to watch on Netflix, I'll yeah. look at it. I'll look. This is my last question. What are your thoughts on live action remakes of animated stuff like those Disney live action remakes or like those kind of stuff? Like. Uh, those things where you see it getting advertised on DSTV about live shows with Iron Man and the Hulk where people no, are wearing plastic. No, that's not what I mean. Oh. I mean they make movies yeah. about animated properties but they make it in live action form. So basically like um, Transformers is one of them because Transformers was a cartoon and they made live action that kind of stuff. Oh, 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 I get it, I get it. Like The Lion King. Yes, that, that kind of stuff. That really annoys me. Oh, you don't like it? Yeah much it's a lot better it's just in one format if you, if you make it a cartoon just keep it that way for me for me that is if, if it's a movie yeah let, let it be a movie don't make a cartoon out of it again that's for me is like that for me is like reading a comic then watching the movie or watching the movie then reading the comic it's like i'm watching the same thing that really annoys me because i already know how it's gonna end i know how it's gonna progress you know the characters yeah so it's like That's i'm fresh. spoiling it for myself yes so that is a no i have not watched the lion king yet i watched it with my dad yeah i it remember was, you were saying it was cool it was good but nothing special 
Besides, see, besides, besides that, that nice looking realistic animation, it was pretty much the same story. They just, they just made some, some bits longer. Like Timon and Pumbaa's stuff was different. I consider them living by their own, they lived with, with other creatures and they had, and there was just like fresh new jokes. But besides that, it was basically the same movie. <laughs> I was, uh, I think, but the, but the live action, they did the same version of like the jungle, like the Lion King. Before that, they did the Jungle Book, which was actually good, which is completely different and actually was good. I watched the Jungle Book. There's, there's a lot, there's a couple. Yeah. Because okay. there's the Jungle Book, yes, and there's Mowgli. Yeah, that's a Netflix movie. That one's not that good. They, they made quite a lot of uh, those movies, and you know, it's like, mmm. Yeah. Nah. Nah. You know, they. Sony's planning on doing a One Punch Man live action movie. Oh no, please, no. It could please be good. No. It could work just because One Punch Man is such a ridiculous show, ooh, so ooh, 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 as long as they make it funny, it's fine. There is a couple of clips on YouTube of? Of real live One Punch Man. Well, the reaction is it? It's just fight scenes. Uh, just fight scenes. So check, check, check them out. You, you dissing. Well, not dissing, but you're saying you don't like these live action remakes of animated yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. But aren't you a fan of the Transformer movies and those are technically classified as a remake? Exactly. I have never watched the cartoons. Oh, I have, but... Neither have I. I. I watched the movies first. So it's like, for me, it's not a remake. It's like, that's the first That's thing. how you see Transformers. Yes. And I love Transformers, man. One of my all-time favorite actors who... One of my dream guests to get on this podcast. It was in the Michael Bay. Was in the Michael first. Was, was one of the first. He was in the first three Transformers movies. Who? Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. He was the kid in the first that one. Name? Oh, the kid with the anger issues. Yeah, he had a. Yeah, he had. I recently watched the movie with him, and it was perfect. It was a great film. Really? What? What's it called? Disturbia. Disturbia. It's about him, and he's on house arrest. Because he punched his teacher, <laughs> and then he gets bored and he ends up spying on people in his neighborhood, and he finds out about someone doing some, finds out someone in his neighborhood is a serial killer. Ouch! It's a good movie. And you do expose him. Yeah, he's good in that movie. He's got some good action scenes. The half the time he's spying on his neighbor, and he's waiting for it to go swimming. <laughs> he, he wants. Do, do, do you spy on your neighbor's uh, dungeon? No, I'm not. I'm not. Creep. Creep. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess we're done here. Awesome. Thank you, don't you? That was for, cool. Thanks for ha thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Once you've once you've done some pro fights, I should get you back on and no, talk about so those. So you're not gonna have me anytime soon. Well, I've done you. So there must be something new to talk about before I bother having you back on. Okay. Uh, couple of knockouts will do. What? Knocking people out a couple of times, work up here on TV, uh, be famous, then you can ask me how it is to be famous. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Guys, make sure to go follow Lewis on Instagram. What's Instagram so people can go check you out? Porcupine Mataya. Porcupine Mataya. The link will be in the description, the name will be on screen. Go follow him. Also follow me on Instagram, at Dante Bazia. Please like. Share, comment, and subscribe, and that's all I'm gonna say. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please share it around to your friends, your granny, your dog, whoever you want to, just share it around. That's how the podcast grows. That's all I gotta say. Peace. Awesome. Thanks, Dante. You're welcome. <laughs>